Tom here from Lawrence System. We're gonna talk about FreeNAS 11.3 U4, which is the latest update. Some bug fixes that are in there, a couple highlights. And I wanna talk about the longevity of FreeNAS. And well, not really how long it runs, because obviously you can run pretty much forever, but what it looks like running on one of our older systems. And I'll bring that up, because I'll talk a little bit about old hardware and what you should do with it in terms of FreeNAS, because this comes up of, should I use my older system? Uh, will FreeNAS keep supporting it? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. So here's the FreeNAS 11.3 U4 update. And once again, no feature changes, mostly lots and lots of bug fixes, over 100 bug fixes that are located in here. And there's a bunch of little interface nuances that were goofy, I guess. Uh, I'm not gonna go over every single of the 100 bugs in here, but maybe you have one of the problems on your system that um, will be fixed on this. But let's talk about a couple that I have run into occasionally with clients and consulting that we do. And this one was kind of interesting is, when it decided not to delete expired snapshots. And it turns out it turned the hold on one snapshot was where the problem was. So I've set up snapshots and I wasn't experiencing this problem, but I also haven't had to restore any data and I've also not had to stop and put a hold on a particular snapshot to not have it get purged. But apparently by doing that hold on a snapshot, um, that would stop it. So this bug can easily be created by uh, creating a snapshot schedule and then placing hold on one snap. Uh, removing the hold resolves the issue. So these are, like I said, a lot of minor bug fixes. Uh, there is those security updates in here. So I do recommend you load this. I know a lot of people are always nervous about loading updates. I try to keep all of our systems patched and up to date, uh, provided there's no major issues that would slow you down from doing it. Uh, but in this particular case, there are at least a few security issues, including a kernel panic for the Linux KPI subsystem, fixed kernel panic in MPS driver. Uh, Fix USB HID descriptor parsing error. Fix vulnerabilities in Unbound. That's specifically the security uh, things in there. So if uh, I didn't di dive deep into this, but essentially this is Unbound server. Not that you run DNS on specifically FreeNAS, but when FreeNAS were to do a D if it were to do a DNS lookup, a malformed answer the result from a DNS lookup from an upstream name server can send Unbound into an infinite loop resulting in denial of service. A malicious query can cause a traffic amplification attack against a third-party authoritative name server. So this is kind of a, a interesting condition where if you're resolving something and FreeNAS looks up a site, that site happens to be have a malicious DNS record in there, it just sends them bound into a loop and crashes. So uh, obviously that's not good and something you may not run into that often. It's not like FreeNAS spends a lot of time resolving things because it's generally just looking up what you ask it to. So it's kind of an edge case. It's not like you're running a browser on it and you're looking up things actively with FreeNAS. But if you were, you know, or someone figures out a way to do something, or maybe you have some plugin and someone drops a resolver in that plugin to say, hey, go look up this site and it happens. It's, an, it's a real edge case for it to happen, but nothing's, you know, it's always better to err on the side of caution, keep your security patches up to date. Um, unable to specify OAuth client ID and secret for Google Drive and OneDrive Cloud Sync credentials. Um, I have not done any video on backing up to Google Drive and a few people have asked me about that. So that may be an upcoming video and it's good that they fixed the OAuth client ID on here. And I bring that up because it's also related to the Google Teams Drive and the fact that Teams offers quite a bit of storage. It's been really popular. Google's, uh, we have a lot of clients using it and we're a user of it. Uh, so I may do a video on how to back it up to Teams. It's something I may look into. As there's, you know, it's important to get your data offsite and backed up and Google Teams, if you already have an account or a OneDrive account, not a bad thing. So I'm happy that this bug has been fixed, which is actually a weird bug because if you read through the details here, apparently it was exposed in the UI to put that in there and then somehow removed and then somehow turned back on. So kind of strange, but good news, it, it's fixed if you're having that problem before. Now, this is one that we kind of ran into, and I say we as in me and Xavier when we are setting up his server. I do a lot of videos on XCPNG and XCPNG uh, can host a virtualized instance of FreeNAS 
I've not done a video on this, but it's something I've talked about how to pass drives through. But apparently there was a, a certain condition un, under heavy load that would cause it to crash and that's now been fixed. So yes, they are watching um, through the bugs on this. As long as you're reporting these bugs, if you are running a virtualized version of FreeNAS, and it's, it's a specific case that Xavier had for uh, his setup, which at some point we may do a video on Uncover for how he built his malware lab. And, and essentially test hacking lab that he's got, the virtualized instance was having issues. Our solution was actually really quickly, I said, just go to TrueNAS Core because um, that's the more later version it's out and all the little bugs that we were experiencing uh, for the virtualized was working fine. But it sounds like this is also fixed in U4. Recursive replication is another one we ran into with a couple clients uh, we did consulting with and it was basically a problem where when you want a bunch of data sets and I've done you know how to do replication on uh, FreeNAS, but you should be able to just check that little box that says, hey, just replicate all the data sets over to the other system. And there was times when that didn't work and now that bug has been fixed as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about my old FreeNAS server here that's been running for a while, because this is kind of something that came up and said, hey, what about old hardware and FreeNAS? Now, this system has been rebuilt because I wanted to uh, re-engineer everything on it, but it's still an older system. This is just a system we built in uh, 2014, I believe, towards the end of or the beginning of 2015, and it is an old Intel i5. And yes, you're seeing it right, only four threads on it. So no, this is not something that there's any bragging rights in terms of performance, but it does work quite well. Now. I had the pools pulled up and I did a video on having unbalanced feed devs. This is kind of like an over time, what does it look like after it's been running for, well, you know, five plus years and uh, still quite well. So these drives are broke down into three different VDEV groups that are all RAID Z2. Now these VDEV groups are also mismatched. So these are two terabyte, these are three terabyte, and these ones are four terabyte. And this is, I have a whole video where I dive into, you know, mismatched DDEVs and how that works. And I wanna show some of the drive hours on here. So if you look and first we can show how we figure out the drive hours. I'm just running smart control dash A, uh, each drive and grepping for power on. So then we could do drive hours. And you can see based on the hours when you break these down, which one every couple of years that I added more drives and expanded to VDEVs. And then we have the one here for uh, 47,000 hours. And if we divide 47,000 hours divided by 24 hours divided by 365, we get up about 5.3 years time on that particular drive. And I just wanted to comment on that though, because uh, you know you can take older hardware, you can find it for really good prices, and it makes a pretty solid uh, free NAS system, especially when you just need what this particular use case for the server is. It just holds all the backups. It just, everything lands on there and then gets replicated again to our more modern system. And of course, three, two, one backup means it also all critical data is replicated offsite as well. So older systems do work really well and I have not had any problems running updates on it. And it is still running on a flash drive, which I know some people are like, oh my gosh, those flash drives could potentially wear out over time. I purposely, and I back up every time I have backups of this, if the flash drive were to go, I would just reload another, flash drive or maybe actually put a hard drive in it's got plenty of space for one and uh, put in another drive and restore the backup so I do take care of it but in the question of longevity yeah it works quite well and the other side of that too is if you're looking to build a free NAS system you know the build it buy it uh, build out of new hardware shuck a bunch of hard drives and get good deals on them it's great if you really need a high capacity on there but when it comes to uh, pretty solid compatibility. FreeNAS on older hardware that you can find, uh, you know, used on eBay to get you started. So I know not everyone has the budget to buy a brand new super micro, super storage server like the one I reviewed on this channel the other day. Um, that's, I know not on everyone's budget. So um, my feelings overall on FreeNAS, especially, and I've done a couple of videos, and I generally am using older hardware for my demos. And I just wanna make sure that people, one, know it's very accessible to load FreeNAS and test it out. Uh, and it's very reliable even on this older hardware, even if it doesn't really old i5-4570 and five years later of nonstop use, uh, you know, cause it really doesn't get turned off. Matter of fact, the drive cycle time, let's go ahead and look at that real quick.
besides the runtime hours, the start stop count on this particular drive is only 70 in five years. So uh, that's 70 reboots essentially or power cycles uh, that this thing has gone through and started and stopped uh, over. It's not just a reboot, it has to actually power cycle. So it's only been cycled 70 times over the last five years, which is really not that much for well, 5.3 years based on its hours of uh, on time. So just wanted to throw that out there because that question just kind of comes up once in a while and I don't know if it you know, I should do a dedicated video to old hardware or if I really can figure out a way to articulate that better, but I thought I'd throw it at the end of this video because the question seems to be asked a lot when I do a free NAS video of what about older servers? Can I run it on my uh, motherboard that I don't want to do with after I upgraded my computer? And a lot of times the answer is yes. Uh, it, it's great to run it on this old hardware it runs and you're not going to get the performance, but it, you know, at least it's stable. And if you just need a place to land a bunch of extra data, because maybe you do have a performance system and you want to replicate over to the uh, less expensive system so you have an extra backup. Works pretty good for that. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.